What's up, everybody? Um, I'm Jackson McCalmon. I'm currently a sophomore at Texas A&M University, and I'm in James Abbey Supply Chain 364 class um, this semester. And, you know, the simulation, I, I started on it and, you know, ended the first simulation that I was on, like in the practice module five, like $30,000 in debt. And so I was really confused and I had, I went through a lot of practices just to see kind of what I could pick up. And I went online and tried to look at YouTube um, to see if they had anything that was helpful. Uh, but they all, they had like walkthroughs on how to get through the modules, but it really wasn't helpful and kind of whenever it's time to be graded as a simulation. Um, so I just wanted to kind of make a video and maybe share some of the stuff that I've learned um, through this uh, simulation. And also my vision for it is I kind of want y'all to uh, put in the comments kind of the things that y'all learned as well. Um, and just make this video a tremendous resource for um, people that have to go through the simulation. Um, and so I just wanted to put out like I, I'm coming at, this, coming at this from the perspective of being in Abby's supply chain class in uh, spring of 23. Um, so he might have changed some stuff um, when you're watching this video or you might have a different professor at completely so whenever I talk about like kind of the grade stuff um, you know just keep that in mind uh, that maybe that's not necessarily accurate for your class uh, but it's still mainly good information um, so there's just a few tips and tricks that I want to run through real quick um, I want to like so I just this is my third run through uh, my first run through I got um, an 88 percent on it so I really just want to squeeze as much uh, extra credit as this because we're getting a uh, extra credit off this depending on how well we do on the simulation i want to squeeze every bit of points of we that i can out of this so i'm doing it a third time um so this is like turn one um as you can see so this is just a brand new brand new setup here um and so just kind of wanted to hit a few tips um so my first tip is at first you know kind of take it slow um you know, adjust when you first get into the supply chain. Don't go absolutely nuts um, and just pick up every single contract, you know, because you don't have the resources to handle like massive things. And that's why kind of the reputation score is a little bit helpful because um, you can't go out and get absolutely crazy contracts um, at the first part of the game uh, just because you're only one star. So that's helpful there. Uh, my biggest piece of advice um, probably, and I'm probably going to say that so many times, but hiring um, super cheap employees and training them at the beginning of your um, probably within the first like 10, 12 turns when you're not having a lot of uh, products come through while you're not handling these massive contracts. To be honest, Thomas Potter, man, I probably am not going to hire him just because there's better options out there. Um, I don't like hiring people that are um, above $400 unless they're just absolute studs and I really need them late in the game. But the goal is not to do that, not to need them um, late in the game and expend, you know, valuable money um, and your net worth and account balance on people that you could have trained um, earlier in the simulation. So I'm going to skip over Thomas Potter. Not going to hit him uh, for that one. So I have a few tips um, that I'm trying to work through right now. Uh, so I, I apologize if this video is a little choppy. I'm just trying to get make sure I get all of my stuff in. Uh, but I guess I'll move over to bidding and contracts. Um, so whenever I look at bidding and contracts, I will sort by total price and kind of look at it that way. Cause I don't, you know, nobody wants to waste time with the smaller contracts because that's not going to see a growth, the growth of your company. They might keep you alive, um, and keep you kind of stagnant, but, um, uh, you want to aim for those bigger contracts. And so for me, um, a big thing that I've learned is that, uh, really to earn more profit it's more about cutting costs than it is um, getting more contracts. Um, and so what a very helpful thing to do is to get these contracts with uh, more than 10 weeks. So you can go out and um, go to suppliers and get raw materials and give them more lead time so they can give you a bigger discount on your supplies. Uh, so I will probably start it off with this bad boy. Um, 175, three denim. And I can, I guess I can run a few turns. Um, that's not really the goal of this video, but that's could be helpful. So then we're going to go over to receiving. Um, 
And personally, I'm not a big fan of Owens textiles just because they're so unreliable. But considering we have like a good 12 week contract and it's really um, not that big of an order, uh, I feel like I could I could risk it um, because they really do have really great prices. Uh, but just just in case we're going to sort um, and buy material and go with denim. I love working with United Fabrics. Um, they give you up to a 40% discount, even though they are expensive, they give you really good stuff. And if you order in enough time, you get up to 40% off, which is really nice. Owens Textiles, get some denim. And uh, I'll go with 600 and put in three weeks of lead time. Get it 540. Um, but I, I guess you can just go and look at United Fabrics too and just see. Yeah, if we got 500 there at four lead times. Yeah, so definitely go with Owens there. We also, we also need to get some more cotton, I think, right? Uh, because we only have 100 in stock there. So we need to go and put in an order for 200 cotton. And this has eight weeks of lead time. So we're going to be, we're going to be just fine. And I would usually do three or more weeks of lead time, but considering cotton so cheap, it really just, I don't really care. Now on to production. We're going to go ahead and, uh, put in 300 socks there. Um, even though we only have the material for, 100 of them right now. Come on. Um, get those working. Now, I will say, uh, basically, the, the goal of this game is to get, if, you if you're going to have to upgrade something or train somebody, you want to do it sooner rather than later. So I've done the simulation enough. I know that I'm going to have to upgrade my packer machine, and I know that I'm going to have to upgrade my sewing machine. Um, and I'll probably have to upgrade them again, uh, but that's what I'm going to do now. Um, just so that right now they're not being used at their full uh, capacity. So it makes sense to just take a week now and upgrade them. Uh, kind of like what we do with the employees. So I think that's it for, whoop, hang on. So I think for those denim jackets, um, we're going to have to get that pressing machine right. Oh, nope, just the embroidery and the little color palette machine. I don't know what that is called. Uh, the dyer machine. Yeah, we're going to have to get that in the embroidery machine. And to be honest, I know that we're going to have to get the, uh, whatever this is called, the pressing machine. But I'm going to wait a couple weeks until I at least get that contract. Because once I get that contract, then I can put that machine in and it won't make a difference really. Um, but I think we're done for that turn. Uh, let's go ahead and send it on. All right, so turn two, um, let's go ahead and look at the uh, these employees here. Um, got Calvin Escobar, he, uh, he looks really good. I'm gonna definitely hire him probably. Let's look at these other guys. Yeah, so Calvin Escobar, bringing him on. I'll probably stick him on receiving just cause that's really where I need him right now. Uh, because we're going to have some denim coming in pretty soon. Let's see, when is that coming in again? Okay, that's going to be coming in a couple weeks. All right, yeah. And so I'll get Calvin in there, um, and then I'll probably train him the next turn uh, in receiving. And so he'll be a three-star guy, um, and that'll be super helpful down the road. And I might even train him again in receiving, because if one thing that I learned is kind of if you have a one four-star guy in your shipping department for the most part, he can really manage that department by himself. Uh, there might be some times where you get some heavier objects, um, ones with more material or just huge orders that uh, you might need to stick another guy in there to help him out. But for the most part, those four-star guys can take care of the shipping department by themselves. And that's really helpful because I'm paying him $300 to manage this department instead of maybe paying uh, two people $250 uh, per week. So that's huge for the program, huge win for the program. So let's go look at some of these contracts, um, see what we got. All right, so 
that looks like something that I really want to do right there. Um, the 11 weeks, uh, for, yeah, 150. So that's just 300, 300 denim. Yeah, that looks solid. I'll put in a bid for that. Now for this guy, well, first of all, let me say for employees, I would venture away from hiring a lot right off the gate. Um, in fact, I usually like to just reassign them every week where they need to go. Um, and it saves on costs. Um, so if they were getting a big shipment in one week, I'll stick some more people in there. Uh, and if I don't have that four-star guy in shipping yet, I might have to reassign the uh, the guy from bidding to come and help, help out in the shipping department. And so just kind of being super maneuverable, which is why the Calvin Escobar guy was so good because he was, uh, he's kind of average in all of them. Um, and so I will upgrade him in receiving and shipping. And so he'll be really good there. Um, but if he needs to go take over in client relations or machine operations, you know, we can work that out. And when you do, when you work with these employees and when you work with these employees and try to maneuver them around, it's really helpful to have them at least all two star in receiving and shipping because that's really the places where you need those extra bodies. Um, I've never really seen you really need an extra client relation guy, um, especially if you have just one solid three star guy. Um, putting in two contracts at a time is plenty um, because you know you don't want to you don't want to go too far in these contracts. Right. And so this is another tip. This is kind of off the cuff and I'm sure a lot of y'all have would have figured this out, but when you put in those contracts, especially the bigger you get, the more that those clients want to work with you. Um, when you see that, that contract that you want right there, it's like, Oh, I've got that 350. I got to go order 350 den or 300 denim. Uh, you can go ahead and order that now because chances are you're going to get that contract. And if not, you can come back the next week and make a better offer and still get that contract. So I would highly recommend just going ahead and working off um, the assumption that you're going to receive that contract. Now, this just might be for my class, uh, but I'm sure maybe your other professors are doing it too, but getting a client their product on time is super important um, in the real world and with the simulation and the grading uh, process. Uh, and so getting a customer, their product on time is crucial. And it's one of the things you need to prioritize when you're doing the simulation. Um, and so if we look at shipping, if you have, I don't know, if you have an order for like 500 khaki pants or something, and you only have 350 khaki pants when it's two weeks out, Go ahead and ship those 350 khaki pants on the standard shipping so that next week, um, when it's only one week out um, and you have those net other 150 goods, you can only you can ship those 150 goods on expedited shipping instead of shipping all 500 on them. And that'll really help you save on shipping costs. Uh, but it's really important to get the clients their products on time, which is why I really love bidding on contracts that are over 10 weeks. and hence giving me more time to get those raw materials in. Um, and so with those contracts, I would, there's a lot of preferences. Um, I really love silk, especially those silk dress contracts. Those are huge for the program. Those will help you out a lot. And those will help you grow your, con your, uh, your account balance and your company a lot is getting those silk dresses. But working with silk is, is so much, so easy. Um, and if you go to United to get your silk, uh, you can get massive discounts on it um, and get them high quality stuff. Uh, but then you also have, there's a little bit of a preference when it comes to what kind of products you wanna produce. Some people get in the season where they're like, okay, all I'm going to produce is denim jackets. And that's fun. That's fine. All, all in all. But some of your machinery is going to get blocked up. Um, for example, I think, well, let's call them, let's say that you're huge into cotton socks. You know, this, the heat transfer machine doesn't work, doesn't use cotton socks. So you're going to have, you know, the cutting machine, the sewing machine, uh, and the packing machine are all going to be just absolutely booked, but all of these other four pieces of equipment aren't going to be used at all. 
Um, and so maybe varying the products that you're uh, producing could help, but it's really all personal preference. That's just kind of something that I found. Um, unless they're all silk dresses, and then sometimes you got to take the risk because those silk dresses are uh, super huge. One other thing that I would say is watch out for those holding costs. I would actually go into your finances. Like that's a brutal thing to see in your finances right there. Negative $6,000 on your first week. Um, but go in your finances often and really just see kind of where you're losing money at. And I guarantee you a lot of it's going to be from holding costs. Um, and don't mind those raw materials unless they're really out of hand. Um, that just basically tells you, hey, you might be wanting, wanting to look for a new supplier. You might want to. Um, get some better discounts. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of my problem is holding costs because I'll stock too much stuff up in receiving, or I'll have some products sitting and shipping for a while. And truly it's like, yes, you kind of want to move, you want to move all your products together, but it might be cheaper to maybe move a good bit of your products out. So they're not sitting um, and taking up some holding costs. And, you know, just move them out separately and before you have to wait for the rest of the products to get in, uh, just saving holding costs that way. But, yeah. And the last thing that I wanted to say, um, probably the most important thing, is just to share with y'all that, hey, y'all are way more than a grade, uh, way more than a number on a piece of paper or a percentage in a grade book. Uh, you are treasured, you are valued, um, and you're just so cherished. Uh, so no matter what happens in this class, no matter how, what happens in finals or, um, your other classes, just know that you are so treasured and so cherished and, uh, the world wouldn't be the same without you. So, you know, just walk through these, this next week or so, um, if you're going through finals or just walk through the semester with, with peace, um, with peace of mind that there is a God who loves you and cares about you. Um, and that's really, that's really all I have. Uh, but this video would not be uh, beneficial at all if it was just me talking. I need y'all to put in comments kind of the things that y'all have learned. I want this, the video itself to really not be as much of a resource, um, but the people uh, who are commenting to be a huge resource. So I hope this video has helped, but I hope the comments will help a lot more. Um, but yeah, um, y'all got this. Let's go. Let's finish it out strong.